Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habata fillah I wanted to address the trolls uh, those people who do hit and run cut and paste comments and you find this kind of negativity all throughout unfortunately now with social media and the internet so many people do it they do it to Islamic channels they do it to non-Islamic channels and it's very important that we, as Ahlul Sunnah, we avoid this by all means. And so, for a person who is a troll, then they can say anything they want. They are, they can repeat or make any unsubstantiated obsist, 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 claim or statement. And this is very dangerous. Is very dangerous, and this uh, can lead to cursing people, slandering people, uh, belittling of a Muslim, and you should not even do that with Ahlul Bid'ah. So, if you're not listening to someone for benefit, or even if you disagree with them, you you need to uh, be able to uh, respond to them with knowledge, not with ignorance, not with foolishness, not with slandering and backbiting. And this is because, for example, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was going by a graveyard. Marra Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala qabrin faqal innahum al yu'adhiban wa ma yu'adhiban fi kabir amma aharuhuma fakana la yusataru min al bul wa amal akhir fakana yamshi bin namima the Prophet ﷺ was walking by these graves and he said, Verily they're being punished and they're being punished for something the people don't think is big. They don't think it's great. They don't think it's a big deal. Hey, I'm just a troll. Hey, I'm just speaking easily about this one and that one and I only slandered her, but it's it's not a big deal. And as for one of them, they used to not clean themselves properly when they used the restroom, the Kromakum Allah. As for the second one, is they used to spread tales throughout the community. What is a, who fits this description better than a troll? Because a troll now has the international community to make comments, to curse, to uh, backbite people, to slander, to carry tales of Namima. Oh, I heard this about someone. It's unsubstantiated. Oh, I think I'll spread this about someone because I don't like their channel. I'll spread this one because I, I want to belittle this dai or this alam or this uh, person calling to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, or this person who dis disagrees with me. So I'll curse them. I will use racism. I will use slurs. I will use... You, you understand the point that this is pure ignorance and this is completely unbefitting of any Muslim even from Ahl Bid'ah and when the Prophet Sallallahu said that they Fakana Yimshi bin Namima that this person used to, to spread Namima Namima Habitafillah as the scholars mention it is to spread news throughout the community in order to spread wickedness. So when you talk about someone, for example, if you comment on someone or, or you know, whether this is with the tongue or whether this is with the keyboard, that in order not to spread any good, not to call them to the haq, not to uh, do things in an Islamic way, then you are spreading facade. You're spreading wickedness. And you are carrying namima. You're spreading namima. Uh, another point here is you find that people who are involved in this in trolling, that mostly they use false claims. There are those who come you know, with knowledge and they bring their viewpoint. And at least if they can come with respectable uh, respectable speech and a respectable edib manners, then perhaps they will get, you know, be able to have that discourse that they seek. You know, if they want to have a, a manakasha almiya, a knowledge-based discussion, 
But however, most of the people just make false claims and want to belittle people or make themselves seem bigger than they are. And what's dangerous is when you make false claims in Islam, this is a punishable offense. So this is another reason why it's befitting for any Muslim to involve themselves in this, because that means they're getting sin from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they're going to be held accountable for. Perhaps they're putting good deeds on the scale of the one they're speaking against. And if it was in an Islamic society, they could actually be brought to court if they are uh, um, speaking, you know, with false claims. You know, they must be must prove their, their claims, or they will be lashed. Another important point with regards to uh, trolling is what you find is most of the people are cut and paste Muslims. That means that they have no knowledge, no ta'seel, no nothing in ilm, but rather they just cut from this website, they paste from this one, they, they cut and paste, and they cut and paste comments a lot of times, and ideologies, with no tatsis, no no uh, foundation in Islamic knowledge. It's very important to gain beneficial knowledge and to have fiqh fi deen, to strive to bene do those things that benefit you, as the Prophet wasallam said. And the Prophet wasallam said, Talib al farid to al Muslim. It's an obligation on every Muslim. So every Muslim should be speaking when they're going to speak, to speak that little bit with knowledge. Speaking with Qala Allah, Qala Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another important point is people like this, they spread doubts and they spread lies and they spread ignorance. And this can only be done by the person who's already a wicked fasik themselves or they're a person who's very ignorant and they're following the asloob and manners of Ahl Bida. It's really... I can only think of those two scenarios. Either the person is a wicked sinner themselves, or they are an ignorant uh, person, ignorant individual, and illustrating their ignorance. And what's dangerous about that, as we mentioned, it's a sinful endeavor. That means they fit the ayat, that they are the fasics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us against. Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al kareem يَا يُلَذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسَكُمْ بِنَبِئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَنْ تُسِيبُوا قَوْمٍ بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُسْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم O you who believe, if a fasik, evil person comes to you with any news, verify it, lest you should harm people in ignorance. And afterwards, you become regretful for what you have done. How many people have spoken about people and made statements, especially about scholars, or they've spoken about issues they shouldn't be speaking about, and then they have to make a public ban. We'd like to make a ban for the mistake we made here. We'd like to make a ban, a public ban for this, a public ban for this. Why? Because you don't know how to keep your mouth quiet. You, don't, you always have to jump into affairs. And this is the dangerous thing. Likewise, the one who eats the flesh, who backbites and slanders, that if they're a truthful person, then they're, they and and they keep doing these activities, then at, they will at a minimum they'll have to be making these types of bans all the time. But if you keep silent and involve yourself in those things which are beneficial, and speak the haq, you safeguard yourself. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Lest you should harm people in ignorance." Out of ignorance, if you speak about someone, and I'm going to give you a real example. Well, I recall when I lived in Medina, and this was from a Talib al Alm, this is a Talib al Hadith. This brother, you know, mashallah, you know, study, he was his last year of graduating. We were leaving, I think, a daughter of Sheikh Suleiman al Haili together, because he was my neighbor. So I was driving him back to our neighborhood, and I mentioned a Sheikh. Uh, one of our mashayikh from Ahl Sunnah, and he said, Does it, isn't there some kalam on him? You know, isn't there some speech? Aren't there some, isn't, hasn't some scholar spoken about him or scholars or what have you? And I said, you know, and I knew that there was some controversy there, but I said, like what? 
He said, oh, you know, oh, I, I just heard, you know, I, and I was like, subhanAllah. I said, you're the one in Kulit Hadith. I'm just a, a worker, an employee here doing some Talib al but you're the one studying Ruwayat and studying the importance of Khabar al and and, and and carrying, you know, verifiable news and, and being a, a trustworthy person, a person of Adala. And this is what, this is the end result. So this is the important thing, Habit Filah, is be careful. That's why I don't even like to speak about too much of anyone, unless I feel a hajjah. And this is the tarbiyah that I received from our ulama, like Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi. And I can recall him saying this before. He said, usually I don't speak about individuals like this. I usually don't like to speak about ma'ayaneen, unless there's a hajjah. And then he was start, started in on a person well-known for bid'ah in, in Egypt. And likewise, you see this from a lot of our major scholars that they practice that qaida. If there's a hajj, if there's a need to speak about it, do. But unfortunately, the youth don't have the, the, the knowledge or the base foundation, and they speak about everybody without any, uh, any ta'seel. So they have nothing to stand on except for their fame and their tongue and their fisk. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.